Hi everybody! Today I'm going to demonstrate some useful tips in SOLIDWORKS that are going to save you quite a bit of time, especially when it comes to dealing with huge projects with too many parts, folders, subassembly files, etc. So in this video you're going to learn, number one, how you can easily visualize an assembly file without necessarily putting files next to it. So I'm assuming that many of you will be intrigued by the method that I'm going to tell you in a little bit. And number two, you will learn how to properly change the name of parts so that when you open up an assembly file, the software won't show you any error or mess so basically you will be just fine. All right, so let's get started. All right, we have an assembly file here with all of its components next to it in the same folder. And if I attempt to open this assembly inside SOLIDWORKS, there has to be no problem basically since everything seems to be just fine. So I'll just open this. And this assembly model is made up of a few parts as you can see in the design tree of the assembly. And the thing is SOLIDWORKS opens the assembly files made up of external parts only if these parts are exactly in the same folder as the assembly, okay? So for example, if I just accidentally or intentionally remove some of these parts, okay, and then attempt to open this, I can see that the software says that it cannot find the location of those four parts. So we have to either suppress those components or browse for them. And that's a serious problem because there are many situations in which we would want to transfer these assembly models into our colleague's computer without creating very huge folders including those parts. So, so in that case, we're not able to visualize the assembly model without putting those parts inside the folder of the assembly. So the solution is, let me just close this up, okay? And I attempt to open the assembly here. And as soon as I hit or click on the assembly file, I can see three modes to select. We have resolved, which is the typical state that the software resolves those components into assemblies. And we have lightweight, which is exactly the resolved, but this time the software automatically optimizes the calculations and some procedures to open and carry out uh, working with your CAD model. So as a result, working with your CAD files will be more smoother and quicker and finally, we have large design review. So I'll just select that and open this assembly. There we go. We have, we have our assembly file here and without having access to these parts. So I can just simply take a look at the assembly geometry and these features, etc. So this is actually a very a valuable asset that this software provides for us. But the only disadvantage of this mode is that we're not able to have access to the mates, we're not able to work with the assembly, and we cannot see the design tree of these uh, of this part, so we can't make changes. And in, in other words, we are limited under this mode. So there's an alternative to that. So I'll just go back and let me open this again. And as soon as I again hit on the assembly, I will just select large design review and this time I will turn on the edit assembly option here. So if I just do that, notice that the mates are there and I can just simply have access to these mates so I can add some new mates and also I can just get rid of these mates. So for example, if I want to free this, this upper cap, I can just simply go to the mates under the parts and finally remove all of them. Okay, and I can move this around and have a quick review on some of these features. So that was tip number one. So for the tip number two, I'm going to show you how you can appropriately change the name of parts without problems. So for example, if I just want to change the name of this file, base2, to base1, there are many ways to do that. However, sometimes there will be some problems, and I'm going to show you one of them. In order to do so, I'll just right click on it and go to the rename because this is typically how we accomplish this, okay? And I'll say that base two should be base one. All right, everything is good so far. And I can open this assembly and notice that the software says that it cannot find the base two file that was previously included in the, in the assembly. So how can we tell SOLIDWORKS that, okay, instead of searching for base two, come here in the folder and open this file, base one, okay? So in order to do that, I'll just say that, okay, SOLIDWORKS, go and select base one file. So I'll just right click on the on this unresolved file and go to the set to resolved, okay? And here we should select browse for file. And then we can select whatever file we want to put into the assembly. So I'll just say that base one should be included. And you can see that our, our assembly model is now completed. 
But as you notice, this process was kind of cumbersome and it can be frustrating for huge projects, especially with those that include a great number of files and parts. And basically we should repeat this process for all of those unresolved parts. And that's why I'll say that there's another way, there's an alternative way to get the same results. And that is if I close this and I'll say that base one should be base two this time. So I'll just right click on it and instead of going to rename, I'll just go to the SolidWorks option and then rename. So here I can change the name of part in a correct way. So I'll say that base one should be base two. And as soon as I open the assembly, there won't be any message or any problem here. And our assembly is just fine. I think these two tips could be very useful because I've seen many people struggling with these two concepts that how can I visualize or transfer assembly files to other computers or systems without having to including its parts into the package and how we can change the name of parts in a right way. So I hope that was pretty helpful for you. Please subscribe to our channel and leave your comments down below and have a good day.